what you call it, mirror blog or what have you. Yeah, th those were the three the three Twitter comments that were in your article. Yeah, yeah, and and to me that I mean I can understand if you if 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 you sexually assaulted, it's it's an emotional trauma, and and what you do, you can do the most. I mean, there is no particular way a victim should behave or anything because you can because it 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 should be a shock. So I can understand that you can take the comments out, say, at around the time for the police interview. But I cannot understand why you take it out three weeks late, when you, when you raise it three weeks late. And, and uh, when I saw that, that was on the 14th of September. On the 15th, I contacted Marianne Nui to tell her about what I had found. Because to me, that was an indication that somebody is actually deleting things that the police should know about. Uh, and I was uh, contacted by the police on the 16th of September and I had a telephone conversation. Again, these telephone interviews. I had a telephone interview with Eva Olofsson and I showed her where she could find the tweets uh, and I, I helped her along so she could see the deleted tweets as well. Uh, and then I wrote a long uh, statement to the police saying exactly what I thought had found and what I thought it meant. And I followed it up with the second man saying, I think these are things that you should investigate. Is it possible and that she was busy for three weeks? I I'm just going to put that out there. Is it possible that she was busy and she didn't get to her Twitter blog? I mean, what is it specifically about these tweets that you find incriminating with regards to her? Uh, First, first, there are there are three separate tweets, and I talked about each and every one of them. The first tweet says something like, Julian would like to go to a crayfish party, anybody that has any seats. That tweet to me indicates that Anna is interested in telling everybody that follows her tweets, hey, okay, I have a relationship with Julian, we get on very well. So it's actually bragging about the relationship. Hey, if she was sexually assaulted the day, the previous night, I don't think that's the thing you should do, normally do. Anyway, the, uh, the second tweet is from uh, after the crayfish party, around two o'clock, she says something, sitting outside two o'clock, uh, barely freezing, with the world's coolest, smartest people. That's amazing. She's actually saying that, okay, I like the company of Julian and Julian's friends. If you had been assaulted a day before, I don't think that's you. You don't you don't tweet like that. Uh, the third tweet that is taken out is from Wednesday, the following week, uh, when somebody, a guy called Dekaminski, has commented on her tweets, uh, and he has asked questions like, "What really happened?" Blah blah blah, uh, and then she says. Uh, it's, she says something like, you mean worthy thing crayfish, something, I mean, uh, implying that something had happened in a positive way. It was, it was not in a negative way. So these three tweets are taken out. And to me, to me, they, I mean, it's something like, I see it like this. If I had been involved in a crime, if I was a victim of crime, I wouldn't erase anything what I had been doing because everything she can be explained. She could have, I mean, if there was something that about these tweets, she could have explained it to the police and should, she should have mentioned it to the police in, in a sequential story. It happened like this, blah, blah, blah. It was the crayfish party. Because of this, I, I tweeted it like this. It, it should be told in a context, but it's not. Anna's police interview, it's, it's like one piece here and then it's another piece here and then it's another. So it, it's it just she's just focusing in on p, on the actual sexual crimes, and there is nothing about the general story. How did it happen? How did it come um, about? She she actually did um, give some reason as to why she deleted. Isn't that correct? Yes. Can you uh, can you um, tell I can us tell what you that? that yeah. Uh, because I didn't, I did not want to get involved and and uh, 
create problems for the police investigating this. I didn't write about this until I saw uh, a press release from Marianne Nui in the end of September that she was saying something like, "It's the case is almost wrapped up, it's just some minor details we have to do. Then I decided to, now I think I have to tell the story about the deleted tweets so people know about it. Before I did that, I contacted the author of the article I mean, that I had commented on, uh, Sara Gunnerud. She wrote the, an article about WikiLeaks theories can do dim-witted things. That was the article I commented, which ended up in the deleted tweets, etc. Uh, so I commented on that. Com I wrote a personal email to Sara just in order so that she could speak to me and say something about the investigation and maybe have stopped me from writing about it because I did not want to bring up the issue that this is a false allegation. Anyway, when I wrote my article, it was on the 30th, I published it on the 30th of September, 6.19 in the morning. On 6.44, if I remember it correctly, I had a reply from Anna Ardeen and she was telling me that I was kind of a funny guy. And she also said the reason why she had deleted the tweets. And she then says, I deleted the tweets to avoid media attention that I would know would come out of this. So that indicates to me, she says, okay, I deleted the tweets around the time of the police, when I, around the time of the police station, when we went to the police station, I erased it around the 20th of August. She didn't answer the question why she deleted the tweets a second time, three weeks later. Because obviously it was only me that saw these comments and I didn't make a fuss about it. And there were no press, uh, there was no media attention to her tweets. So there was no reason for her to, to delete the tweets a second time. I, 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 I want to comment on this just just as a person. I'm, you know, for me, I think I have less of a hard time uh, understanding how a mind can work in that kind of circumstance. I think also uh, I, I'm of the mind that men and women, I mean, for a man, if a man gets uh, punched, say, for example, I mean, it, it's very natural for a man to sort of defend his physical space. There, you know, even in the act of sex, I mean, there's a much more passive role for women. So I think that, uh, you know, I, I think there might also be an element of denial that can take place for a sure. woman who is, let's say she, I, I'm not making excuses for a woman. Uh, we are, women are responsible for themselves, adult women, just as men are. But psychologically, it doesn't seem it, to me to be a tremendous step that somebody would uh, act so... Uh, I don't know, uh, contradictory. Uh, and um, I mean, if it evidences anything to me is that she's not quite sure what exactly is going on. If she's telling the police one thing and then she's deleting tweets, it sounds to me like she doesn't really have a very clear picture of what the next right thing to do is. Um, so I, I, I wonder, um, will these tweets, I mean, have these tweets been, uh, this, this evidence, this destruction of evidence been brought up in the uh, February hearing? Uh, in the February hearing, I, I was a witness and I mentioned about it. Uh, and and uh, in my view, uh, the questions I got from, from the Julian Assange lawyer weren't that weren't that good, so, we, so it, I could not develop the story as the story is, actually. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, delete, the deletion of the tweets to me is, is significant because that's, that indicates that you have at least been thinking about what you should, what you should do. I mean, what, and what Anna does around the 20th of August, she deletes the tweets. She also calls the Pirate Party and asks them to delete her name from the press release from the 17th, where, she says, where, she, where it says she was press secretary. 
and at least she's clear in her mind, in a way of. I mean, I have, to, I have, to, I have to raise this because this shouldn't come to the police attention. And what's also very important is that Anna does not mention about the tweets. She doesn't mention about the crayfish party. She doesn't mention anything about the following ah. day when she was press secretary at the meeting with with the pirate party. Why doesn't she say anything about that? Well, and then, yeah. which is even more important to me, is actually at that at that meeting with the pirate party. A friend of Anna Dean was there, Petra Ornstein, which is also. She talks about her conversations with Anna on that particular Sunday. She doesn't mention with one word that she was actually at the Pirate Party and WikiLeaks meeting where Anna was taking part as press secretary. Not one word is mentioned about that. And she also says something to the police that she, Petra says, I have met Julian on two occasions, at the Greyfish party and at a dinner the following day. The police does not ask one single question about, okay, tell me about the second time you met Julian Assange. They, they I mean, they didn't ask a question about that. And, and it's just bad police work. I think what you just said actually uh, is much more convincing to me. I mean, if it's simply a matter of deleted tweets, I mean, it's like, you know, let's say you have a horrible experience and you just want to wipe it all out. You know, you can act irrationally, even True. towards one's own writing, or it doesn't have to be a person. It could be whatever, you know, yeah. uh, a craft project. <laughs> um, yeah. But given the fact that she's not actually telling the police the nature of her relationship with Mr. Sanch, it, it starts to become more, much more suspicious. I mean, for me as well. Yeah. Because because she mentions uh, she mentions the events on uh, Friday night.